Matt Lederham for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. I'm delighted to be joined by Dev Sarney. We're here in Poland for the press conference, the opening press conference for Alexander Usyk and Daniel Dubois. You're a man of many hats. Today you were uh, in place of Frank Warren on the stage. Didn't stir the pot too much, but you basically played your case for the Queensbury man and did what you would do to crack cracking fight. I think a lot of people, it seems, are overlooking Daniel in this fight, but just talk to us a little bit about how you see it. Listen, they are massively overlooking Daniel Dubois. And yeah, today's been fun. Um, normally at the press conference, I'd be hosting it and I'd be moderating and asking various fighters various questions, trying to stir it up. But today I was essentially the promoter, playing the promoter role, so it was a different hat. But it was good fun. I really enjoyed it. I quite liked just like looking at Usyk and being like, Look, you're really good, but he's going to beat you. You know, so it's you know we're we going we're going with the Queensbury uh, the Queensbury narrative here the Queensbury push we've had Daniel Dubois since 2017 since his professional debut we've been you know it's been a rocky road at times right he's had the Dubois he's had the Joe, Joe Joyce setback he's come back stronger he had the Kevin Larina but people are looking at that as like negatives right what he went through in that fight I think there's a lot of positives to come out of that as well sure he went down a few times he was caught cold he was injured still managed to knock the guy out. That's not too bad, is it? As long as you come away with the win. This is a big fight, mate. And um, I hope I hope we all back the Brit. Isn't that the, the, the thing that we're always banging on about? Back the Brit. Get behind Daniel Dubois. This is a kid who's been boxing since... Well, since he was a kid, basically. And he's got the chance to change his life and to rock the world. Put the whole heavyweight division upside down. What a chance. I spoke to Don Charles and I said this is almost his opportunity to gate crash the party. What do you make of this link up between Daniel and Don Charles? Don basically just said um, Faith has put us together. I asked him to elaborate. He said no. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> um, what do you make of the uh, what do you make of this link up um, for Daniel? Do you think this is now um, sort of the right match up in order to prepare him for a guy like Alexander Rusik? He's been in the trenches with Derek before uh, as Don Charles. What do you make of this link up? Look, I don't know how you do prepare for Alexander Usyk. The, the guy is a uh, the guy is a boxing genius. There's no doubt about that. Um, but when it comes to heavyweight boxing, you've got to, there are heavyweights out there who are naturally 30, 40, 50. So in Tyson Fury's case, 70 pounds maybe naturally kind of heavier than him. It's unbelievable. You think about their walking around weight. So you've just got to be the bigger guy, the the fearless bigger guy. You've not got to go in there and try and you know, second-guess it and outbox him. And I think Daniel knows that. I think Don Charles knows that. You know, I know Don Charles wasn't with Derek Chisora for um, his fight against Usyk, but Don Charles sort of created the Derek Chisora-ish, you know, the, the style that he's got, you know, what he's got there. And he had Usyk in trouble at times. He gave him a hard fight. So he, 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 knows, he knows how to put Usyk under some pressure in there. And... Um, the thing with Daniel Dubois is he's got game-changing power and he could change the game and change everything. Daniel is a natural heavyweight, so when we talk about him coming in and using his big man size, we've seen Usyk, what he's done to an Anthony Joshua, not once but twice. Yeah. Um, Joshua had a better fight in the second fight. Does Daniel look at that performance from Joshua in Saudi where, although Usyk, I think, won the fight, clearly it's fair to say, he had a lot more success than he did in the first one, where he was more standoffish. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of, I don't want to say a blueprint, because nobody's come up with a, um, a blueprint on how to beat this guy, but do you look at that and go, right, I've literally, like you've just mentioned there, I've got to go maybe full steam ahead and say, look, you, I can't give you a moment to breathe here, because if you do and getting your rhythm, before you know it, we're a few rounds down and you're chasing all the time. That's it, exactly. Look, it's, I think a lot of this is just self-belief and I think it's not trying to overthink it. It's backing yourself to be the bigger man, backing yourself to go in there and just impose yourself from the very first bell. Daniel's got to make sure that he does that. He's got to make sure that jab is landing. He's got to make sure he's, he's pushing Usyk back and just using it, making, making it horrible for him as best as he can. Um, but I, th I think the, the, the key difference here between the, the Dubois... And, and the Joshua is that Joshua did certainly in the first fight try to outbox him. I think everyone came away from that thinking, why did you try and outbox him? The second fight, he he had success, but he still didn't fully, fully commit. You know, when the, the, I think it was round nine where he was getting the punches together well as well. That was probably his best round across the whole two fights. But we saw round ten, Usyk, ten, eleven, twelve. He just took over. I think Joshua overthought it, and I don't think Daniel's a, a kind of an overthinker in there. Let's come on to Tyson Fury just for a little bit. I know you guys obviously um, probably know more than what's going on than the rest of us, but strong rumours. Ariel Holana came out and said Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou. At present, because obviously we've Usyk with Dubois, um, Joshua and Dillian, we'll come on to that as well just shortly. 
what do you make of this alleged matchup <laughs> between uh, Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou? If it is to be done as an exhibition or boxing rules, what do you make of it? It's it's a, it's a bit different. It's a bit different. Look, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's what's going to be what happens. Um, I know you probably think that I do and that I'm pretending. Okay. But, but uh, look, fr Frank and George are keeping their cards very, very close to their chest on this. Um, F Fury versus Ngannou certainly brings eyeballs, certainly brings money, certainly draws interest. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think people would watch it and be very interested in what happens. But again, I don't know that it's that. Uh, I don't know if it's even being talked about sort of behind the scenes. Andy Joshua, Dillian White, I know there's a press conference later on. There's that carrot at the end of the rainbow for Andy Joshua of Deontay Wilder in Saudi Arabia. Apparently he's taking this, no rematch clause. Um, and the Saudis have apparently come out and said, this is from an interview I've seen with Eddie Hearn, that they won't be interested if, if, if he loses, it's off the yeah, table yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So a two-part question, how do you think that fight goes? And why do you think even though Dillian White was brought in, that we wouldn't be able to have seen the Tyson Fury one because apparently terms had been agreed or offered 60-40 before. So if there was a fight that Anthony Joshua was supposed to have, Tyson Fury would have been the bigger one, surely? Look, it's, uh, it's tricky talking about Anthony Joshua. I get so much stick for it, but here is what has happened. Okay, he has been offered twice a shot at the WBC World Heavyweight title, December and then more recently as well. He hasn't taken it and he's decided to pursue fights with Dillian White now um, and Deontay Wilder, two guys who Tyson Fury has knocked out quite recently. After, after his most recent fight, Joshua did say, you know, I want to fight for the world title. He said that in, like, in the ring. Um, but it hasn't happened. But look, I uh, I'd certainly give respect for taking on the Dillian White fight and getting balls in at this stage. Look, I, I think it was. I don't think everyone around him wanted it. Like you can just see that from the interviews. But I think Joshua did, and I I love that actually because he he clearly heard. Look, oh, there's there's a bit of trouble here. Probably saw some of the stick coming in and thought, let's just get hold of this. It's Dillian White. I think I'm going to knock him out. Right? He should. And I, I love that he backed himself. So yeah, I actually don't know how the fight's going to go. I think it's like. Is it a fifty-fifty? Considering the last performances against Jermaine Franklin, where um, Joshua was obviously got his new trainer in Derek James, and he was he was doing well, but obviously there's that reluctance there with C to commit. And Dillian White, a lot of people thought that Jermaine Franklin had won that fight. So is this a case of it is now a 50-50? Uh, do you know what I think it is, um, and I think I think the difference is right now Dillian White is he, he will happily go out on his shield we've seen him go out on his shield a few times now he will always go down swinging he's got massive massive balls and he's uh you know he's just got he's got that that kind of that heart and that might be enough to get him over the line against a version of anthony joshua who was perhaps a little bit more gun shy than he was when they first fought was it seven eight years ago the guy that used to stick his tongue out and then jump in with combos and like people jumping in the ring after i think that that's long gone now I think White's got a great chance. Just quickly now, a last one from me. Zile Zhang, Joe Joyce, mm. the rematch. Yeah. Cracking heavyweight fight. Um, for a while, obviously, we've been talking about the heavyweight scene and the big fights maybe not getting made, but when we look at Dubois and Usyk, um, Joyce Zhang and whatever Tyson Fury is going to be doing, they're all big events. What does Joe Joyce have to do differently in this fight to make sure he doesn't come up on the bad end of the result like he did the last one? There's a lot to be changed, um, but um, talk to me about this one. Listen, he needs to be heavier. He needs to move his head. I think that would be a great start. I think some quality sparring would, would be good as well, and I'm sure they're, they're across that. Um, career is on the line. It feels like at, at this point, you know, it, sound, it sounds dramatic. I'm sure he'd fight afterwards as well. But, you know, just sort of at that top level, at his age, to take a setback here against Zile Zhang, it's uh, a lot on the line here. Dev Sani, look, I appreciate your time. Thanks for talking to Boxing Social. No we'll catch up maybe this week in London for the second leg. Good man. All right, mate.